Hello everyone, welcome to this day. It is Monday, October 30th, one day away from Halloween. Santa Ana winds are with us. I got, I'm stuffy, I'm, I'm sneezy. Uh, can you tell it's Santa Ana wind time? It gets me every time. We have a great show for you. At least we got that going for us. We have advanced ear care with uh, Stuart Spencer. He's going to be in here talking about changing over to new medical plans and making sure your hearing is on par and making sure you're getting all those discounts and everything you need for that. And then later in the program, Memorial Care Saddleback Medical Center, we are going to welcome Dr. Amy Bremner and Dr. Uh, Nicole Lewis, and they're going to be talking to us about mammograms, making sure you're getting checked, and making sure you are on top of your health care needs for women in the areas of mammogram and breast care. So stay tuned for that as well. Hey, we've got some important information about the driving range over there in Laguna Woods Village. It's going to be opening up on Friday. It was down for a while. I think they redid, redid all the grass and the sod out there, and so it's looking great, and they're going to have a big ribbon cutting and guest speakers. So starting after Friday morning at 8.30, you can get, head back out to the driving range and work on that swing. I know I need my work, so I'll just get out there myself. Let's take a look at our weather. Don't try playing golf today. Not a great idea. It's going to be kind of windy. We have mostly sunny skies. We've got a few clouds out there right now, but mostly sunny skies today. And we got the Santa Ana's really sticking with us uh, until through tomorrow, at least. The winds will be a little lighter. Uh, of course, tomorrow being Halloween, it'll be sunny and a little bit scary. So watch out for that. And then mostly sunny for the rest of the week. We're going to have the warm temperatures all through the week as the kind of Santa Ana high pressure kind of stays with us for the week. Let's take a look at our sunrise and our sunset. It's a good one. We have the Galapagos Island. We're revisiting that another picture from Loria Maloa when she was out there for her trip. And uh, got some of those blue-footed boobies, I think they're called. I don't think I should say that on television, but that's what I think they're called. And our sunrise was 7.06, and our sunset tonight, 6.02. The days are getting shorter. If you'd like to send us a picture of one of your trips, your pet, or just a nice picture from around the area, go ahead and do that. You can send it to Laguna Woods Village TV at gmail.com. Make sure you have your name in there, where you took the picture, and uh, we'd love to put it on our show. Okay, we have no meetings for you, so we're going to get right to the show. When we come back, we're going to be talking to Advanced Ear Care's Stuart Spencer. Stay with us. A will is not enough to avoid probate. However, if you have a will, a trust, a complete estate plan, then you will avoid probate. We encourage you to come meet with us. It's complimentary. We'll review the estate plan, make sure that it's current, covers all of your assets, and you're actually protected. I'd like to personally thank L.S. Carlson Law for all my family's estate planning needs. I highly recommend them to everyone. Hi, I'm Linda Honey. I'd be happy to help you and your family. Please call us today. Looking for a change of scenery? You don't have to play golf to enjoy all that Nike Restaurant and Lounge has to offer. From a delicious breakfast menu to our delectable lunch and dinner specials, at 19 Restaurant and Lounge, there is something for everyone. Relax with your friends and family and take in the beautiful view from our spacious patio. Or enjoy a cocktail and appetizer in our lounge. 19 Restaurant and Lounge is a great place to socialize, enjoy a meal, or simply take in the view. Join us seven days a week and experience Laguna Woods' exclusive dining experience. At Renew Ketamine Infusion, Dr. Justin Yannick and Dr. Tanya Dahl are board-certified physicians with nearly a decade of experience in ketamine therapy who can help those who haven't found success with other treatments or wish to avoid daily medications. Whether you're struggling with depression, PTSD, anxiety, or chronic pain conditions, our private spa-like clinic focuses on creating the perfect setting for your ketamine treatment. Call us today to schedule your free physician consultation to determine if ketamine therapy is recommended for you. Are you struggling to hear in your noisy dining room? Do you have to pause and think about what people are saying so you can figure out the words? Do you find yourself lost in conversations? Can you hear but you don't understand the words people are saying? You need to get on the ARC. No, not Noah's ARC. This is Stuart's ARC hearing aids with artificial intelligence. You will never know how much better you can hear until you listen to the clear sound and noise right in our office. Call us today. Don't miss the boat and tell them Stuart sent you.
going to be lots of screams and scares tomorrow. And if you want to hear it all, well, you might want to get your ears checked. <laughs> We're going to talk to Stuart Spencer from Advanced Ear Care about the holidays, about or an open enrollment now. So it's time for people to try to check their insurance and all that kind of fun stuff. Stuart, welcome back to the program. Oh, thank you so much. Nice to be here. Thank you. So we're at the year end, and this is the time of open enrollment for a lot of folks who are looking at their what kind of care they need. And, and ear care should be one of the things, at least I would say you say, that should be on that list, right? Oh, absolutely. And, uh, you know, this is a big one, you know, because, I mean, hearing aids are expensive. You know, let's face right. it, good hearing aids are expensive, let me put it that way. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, many people, you know, kind of scan, you know, their benefits or, you know, what packages may be available under right. Plan B options. And it says, you know, hearing aid benefits or hearing aids are covered. And they go, oh, you know, I'll just get hearing aids for free. Yeah, you yeah, know, and I got it going covered. with the Costco. You can buy them off the shelf now. Yeah, so, <laughs> you know, they are, and they're not. You know, sometimes, you know, it's a small benefit. You know, sometimes it's, it's a huge percentage. You know, and so it's really important for them to kind of drill down into that mm -hmm. and really understand what that benefit is mm -hmm. uh, for next year. But for this year, you know, a lot of people, you know, with their current programs, you know, now it's towards the end of the year, they've met their deductibles. Okay. So, you know, that's not a factor. And it's really a good time to look at that and mm -hmm. have us check that for them. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them can get, you know, some amazing benefits, sometimes even uh, hearing aids at no cost you know, through their programs. And so it's really worthwhile to, you know, have them give us a call or come in and let us check that for them. Okay. And when it comes down to you guys, do you guys accept all insurances across oh the board? Oh my goodness, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, gosh, since we've been here for 40 years, okay. you know, we've just had those long-term relationships with those uh, hearing healthcare organizations, you know, Anthem, uh, Blue Cross, you know, uh, United Healthcare, Tr True Hearing Nations, you know, the list goes on and on, but okay. we're a provider for all of them. And so, uh, you know, we'd be happy to help anybody, you know, figure out what those are, what okay. benefits are. Now, we know the holidays are coming up, and this is kind of a great time to not have to hear from relatives and that kind of thing. Maybe I don't <laughs> want to get my ears checked just yet, but if people want to, you know, be able to hear everybody and, and, and go out there and see family, what's a, what's a good thing to do this time of year to make sure everything kind of goes well for the holidays? Yeah, you know, it's <laughs> funny if they actually want to hear, you know, yeah, their if family. Yeah, they actually want to hear. <laughs> <laughs> Some of those in-laws that uh, we don't, but, uh, you know, it's really important. You know, it's... Um, you know, kind of like setting a game plan. You know, most people, you know, get it, you know, let's face it, you know, hearing in difficult, you know, or loud situations are more difficult, I should mm -hmm. say. You know, so families get together, a lot of conversations, a lot of excitement, you know, so uh, sometimes those are the more challenging things. But uh, there's some really simple things, you know, that people can do, you know, to really isolate conversations, you know, kind of away from the crowd, you know, just have their family speak a little bit more slowly and distinctly, you know, and those little things help a lot. And mm -hmm. of course, if you're speaking with somebody hearing impaired, just be a little patient, you right, know, and right. just show them a little bit of grace there and it really helps a lot. And, you know, they can come in, you know, get their hearing aids tuned up, cleaned up. That's a big deal. You know, because small changes make a big difference with hearing. Mm -hmm. So, you know, let's get them uh, on the air the best they can. Cleaned up, tuned in, make sure everything's still working properly. And now's a good time to do that because, you know, during the holidays, you, you're just like everybody else. Doctors, they all want to take their vacations too. So sometimes it's harder to get an appointment at the, the end of the year when, you, oh, I need this like the day before Christmas. It's not going to happen. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like yesterday, you know. It's like, can I have an appointment today? You know. And so we'll get everybody in one way or the other. We, right. Okay. Um, so... Uh, we've talked about before the fact that they, you know you can get them off the shelf now. People can, you know, they shouldn't, but they kind of self-diagnose. I need a hearing aid. Let me just buy this generic. So take me through the gamut of like the kind of hearing aids that are out there and how you can uh, kind of tailor to the needs of the of the patient. Yeah. So it's you know kind of been interesting to see how this over-the-counter hearing aid concept has kind of played out. You know, we kind of wondered, you know, is everybody just going to go buy those? And you know, how will they fit? How will they work? And we're kind of seeing it, you know, play out just, you know, pretty much exactly like we thought it would. You know, people go get those, they try them, they don't fit, or mm -hmm. they hurt their ears, or they're not right. Um, so those are the people we see. You know, hopefully, some of those people are being benefited by those, mm -hmm. you know, lower cost hearing aids. And, you know, it helps them if they can't, you know, uh, afford it, you know, more expensive hearing aid that has a little bit more elaborate type of function to it. So, you know, hopefully that's working out. But you know, the thing is, we've got hearing aids at all price points, good hearing aids. I mean, technology is so solid today. Right. You know, so I mean, yeah, you know, they can, you know, it's kind of like, you know, do you buy, you know, the, um, you know, the Kia or do you buy the Lamborghini, you know? <laughs> I mean, you know, they'll both get you there, you know, mm -hmm. and so right. you know, we have something for every budget. So we really work with people. We have a finance program that's, you know, 
um, 18 percent. I mean, I'm sorry, 18 months mm -hmm. uh, at zero percent. Oh, that's better than 18 percent. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so, you know, that kind of stretches it out for people, and it's really a popular program. So it makes it a little bit easier for them to spend a little bit more when they're uh, on uh, a fixed income. So tell me about some of the diagnoses that you, you get in the office and how a different hearing aid is a different fit for different folks. Because, I got, again, I think some people think a hearing aid's a hearing aid. So oh, yeah. how, what if I have maybe tinnitus versus ear damage versus whatever that might be, how do you guys fine tune those things? Sure. So, you know, it's all to do with the features in the hearing aid and, and what the issue is with the person. You know, we have people that have very mild hearing loss that are just kind of thinking about, gosh, you know, really I hear better in most instances, but yeah, I am struggling in these particular environments. And so, you know, a little bit simpler type of uh, resolution. You know, then we have people with real, you know, severe, moderate, moderately severe type of hearing losses that need, you know, every technology they can get. And, you know, things are becoming so good technologically, you know, it's all about this signal to noise ratio, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and these hearing aids today are looking at their soundscapes, something ridiculous, like 20,000 times a second, wow. looking for what kind so of sound they're making adjustments according to the environment? That's right. You wow, know, I mean, okay. the AI in these hearing aids is, is remarkable and, you know, fast, smart, sharp, mm -hmm. you know, always adjusting in a, in conjunction with the configuration of their hearing loss. Mm -hmm. So people, you know, in those instances that have, you know, those kind of challenges, you know, we have technologies for them. And I mean, people come back and go, oh my gosh, you know, I hear so much better. Okay. You know, so this stuff works. Okay, great. Now, uh, speaking of the technology, I mean, some, some folks are advanced in age and they're not as tech savvy. I know you have, you, know, you can actually dial these things in your phone, right? You can make adjustments on your own phone. That's right. But for people who are not as tech savvy, is that AI really kind of the, the route for them to just let it do it itself, put it on autopilot? You know, that's a great question. And because uh, people say, oh, you know, I'm not, you know, and they're afraid of it, you know. Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. the, the wonderful thing is it's so advanced, they don't have to do much. Right. That's the good part. So that's the thing. You know, they can put them on, wear them, and hear better. Mm -hmm. You know, and of course, they have to be fit properly. And, you know, with a professional who knows what they're doing, you know, we bring people back multiple times. You know, let them go out, wear them, listen to their friends, family, TV, telephone, church, their, you know, uh, social environments, whatever that is, all the clubs they have here, you know. And uh, they come back and say, hey, I could hear here, I could hear, this was really a challenge. You know, we can see exactly how the hearing aid's working. It mm -hmm. records, you know, what's happening to them as they wear it, how long they wear it, how it's shifting into those different environments. And we can reprogram those to make them more automatic for them. Mm -hmm. Now, I know hearing is just kind of one of those things that could, there's degradation at over years. It just kind of falls off. It, are there things that people can do to limit that or is there is there care is there ear care that I could be doing like okay here's how I'm going to protect my ears in some sort of sense like not obviously not going to loud concerts and things like that but yeah. you're wearing earplugs but are there other things that people can just do to make sure that their their ear health is on point well really you know the sound you know the hearing protection you know we have a whole line of hearing protection mm -hmm. uh, I mean that's really advanced technologically as well mm -hmm. even for shooters you know they can wear hearing aids that uh, you know when they fire it compresses. You know we have a lot of military, homeland security, uh, police officers. You know that come in and get those, and they just okay. love them. You know they still the phone still streams to the hearing instrument, okay. and so the sound protection is really sophisticated. You know along those lines, and so obviously you know wearing hearing protection during loud environments like you've mentioned, but. Um, you know, there's really not, you know, okay. I mean, you know, yeah. stuff that you can do other than avoid those loud noises. Mm -hmm. You know, it's at times pretty much generic, you know, so, uh, but it can be ototoxic. You know, there's certain drugs that they don't want to take and, you know, those things. And so we, you know, protect as much as we possibly can. But overall, you know, it's going to be kind of what it is, you know. Okay. Well, good good advice. And this is the time of year, like we said, open enrollment. This is time to check those plans, see if a, a hearing care plan or advanced ear care or someone like that is good for you, Stuart. And always remember, you can just switch it off with the relatives. That's the best part. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for coming in. Thank you so much for having me today. When we come back, Salah Memorial Care is going to be here talking about mammograms and breast health. Stay with us. Did you hear the big news? The FDA announced the over-the-counter hearing aid program. It's been six years in the making. And what does that mean to you if you wear hearing aids or if you're thinking about wearing hearing aids for the first time? Most people are asking themselves, what is an over-the-counter hearing aid? Would it work for me? Where do I get them to try? How much do they cost? For over 40 years, Advanced Ear Care has been helping answer questions just like this. 
Call us today and find out more. And remember, tell them Stuart sent you. The Salvation Army Orange County is committed to building hope in people's lives rather than just more shelters. The Center of Hope, a comprehensive homeless care solution, combines a 325-bed emergency shelter, 72 permanent supportive housing apartments, on-site medical, dental, vision, and mental health care, and an award-winning drug and alcohol rehabilitation center. Donate today to transform lives, create safer neighborhoods, and provide an opportunity to end chronic homelessness in Orange County. If you're driven by an adventurous heart, you're in luck. The thoughtfully redesigned 2023 Subaru Outback shares your spirit. With standard symmetrical all-wheel drive, plus up to 32 miles per gallon, a 260-horsepower turbocharged engine, advanced technology, and an extra-large touchscreen. The 2023 Subaru Outback. Go where love takes you. Irvine Subaru. Buy online, just come in to sign. Get two years complimentary maintenance included on all new Subarus. Breast cancer takes patients down paths they never expected, and Memorial Care Comprehensive Breast Center at Saddleback can help navigate the way. We provide multidisciplinary breast care services for the early detection, diagnosis, and treatment of breast cancer using state-of-the-art technology in a personalized environment designed to meet the needs of each woman. talk about mammograms and breast care and much more with our uh, doctors here, Amy Bremner and Dr. Nicole Lewis from Medi uh, Memorial Care Saddleback Medical Center. I'll get it out. I will get there. <laughs> I promise you that. Uh, welcome to the program. Thanks for being here. Thanks for Thank having you. us. Now, both of you are new to this new program that you came into. Tell us a little bit about your backgrounds. Amy, why don't we start with you? Yeah, so um, I'm a breast surgical oncologist. I did my undergraduate education at UCSD and then medical school at Georgetown and uh, did a five-year residency in general surgery and then a one-year residency, or excuse me, one-year fellowship at USC to okay. do just breast surgery. And Dr. Lewis, yourself? Um, I'm a breast radiologist. I did my undergraduate work at University of California at Berkeley. Uh, I then did my medical degree and training in diagnostic radiology at the George Washington University Hospital in DC and my fellowship in subspecialty breast imaging uh, at Northwestern Memorial Hospital in okay. Chicago. What made you decide this is the focus you want to go towards? Is there, is there a family story or is there something you just said this is, this is a need that you <laughs> see? <laughs> no family story, but I think um, you know, breast imaging is such a unique slice of medicine where we have the ability to impact um, you know, women throughout their adult lives. And for me, whether it's you know, a new mom who's breastfeeding who has some questions or mm -hmm. detecting a breast cancer you know, at its smallest stage, um, it's truly a unique opportunity to be part of so many lives and something that I'm, you know, very honored mm -hmm. for. Dr. Bremner, yourself, how, how did you choose this pathway for yourself? Um, I always loved women's health, actually. Thought I was going to be an OBGYN. Glad I didn't do that. That's <laughs> a, quite the lifestyle. Yeah. Um, great field, but quite the lifestyle. But yeah, I, I always loved women's health. Um, did a rotate, rotation in general surgery, loved surgery itself and then ultimately didn't necessarily think I'd be back in women's health, but that led me back to breast surgery and um, so I can work with women, same kind of thing, just make a difference, mm -hmm. yeah. How important it is for a woman to be able to talk to another woman doctor to maybe feel heard or have that person understand as opposed to a male, and I'm not trying to say male doctors aren't as good, but there's a, there's a certain connection you have, right? I think, I, think, so. I think that's true. I think, you know, some women are very hesitant to, you know, have their mammogram for a lot mm -hmm. of different reasons. And um, I think that's one part where being a woman and having that commonality and understanding helps you to understand that hesitation and be able to address it. Okay. Now, you, the new Women's Health Pavilion is uh, opened up and you guys are both stationed over there. How's, how are things working out over there in general? What's it like? And tell us a little about the pavilion and what, what people should expect when they walk in. I think she moved in. I haven't quite moved in yet. <laughs> I'm moving in today. The boxes are I'm coming. moving in today. She's, yeah, <laughs> she is. We did the breast center, the Sarah and Taylor Niederlander Breast Center, just mm -hmm. opened um, officially uh, last Wednesday, October 25th. Mm -hmm. And so we are all moved in and comfortable in our new space. It's a beautiful new breast center. 
Um, we offer the latest in uh, technology and breast imaging with 3D um, mammography, dedicated breast ultrasound. We installed our second dedicated breast MRI unit. Mm -hmm. And as you can see, it's all in this background of um, large rooms with lots of natural light and personal touches that we hope make our patients feel really comfortable. Right, and that's, and that's a, it's an important part of that, right? To have maybe a, a patient come in there feel like this is kind of a, a, a holistic approach. We have mm -hmm. everybody under one roof that is hyper-focused on this one area, right? That's an important aspect. Exactly, and I think we're mostly involved with breast, breast cancer, breast mm -hmm. imaging, uh, but the Women's Pavilion is going to house multiple different specialties. Mm -hmm. So obstetrics and gynecology, they're going to be um, doing pelvic health as well as pelvic floor rehab. They are going to have breast dedicated medical oncologists. They're going to have um, gynecologic oncology. So it's all women's needs are under one roof mm -hmm. in a very supportive environment. It feels like a spa. So yeah. who wouldn't want to go to a spa? Who wouldn't want to go to a spa? Yeah. Um, <laughs> but then what you put on, look, let's talk about mammograms because I wouldn't want to go to the spa. I know women want to go to the spa. If they're offering mammograms, so I'm still not going to the spa, is what most women would say, right? So how has it changed? How, how, how are you guys making maybe women more comfortable? And what's, what, are the, what are the advances in mammography at the, since the old, you know, squish test? <laughs> um, like I said before, we absolutely understand the hesitation to coming and having your mammogram. It's so common um, and something that we hear all the time. And that's when being at a dedicated breast center really helps because we can address so many of those um, concerns. Um, mm -hmm. But it is so important, you know, in light of that hesitation or despite the hesitation for women to come and have their um, mammogram every year. Mm -hmm. We know that one in eight women will be diagnosed with breast cancer. Mm -hmm. And I think two other important things to you know, consider is that breast cancer, we know the occurrence increases with age. And there's no age where breast cancer can't happen. Right. Um, right. And the second thing is that the majority of women that we will diagnose with a breast cancer do not have a family history. And that's mm -hmm. something that patients are very surprised about. Mm -hmm. um, and so because of those two reasons, we really do encourage women and hope that they'll make the choice to come you know, to the breast center uh, once a year, starting at the age of 40 for their yearly mammogram. Okay, okay. But it, like you said, it can happen so much earlier. And like you said, there's so many things, oh, I don't need to, I'm, I'm only in my 20s, or I'm, I'm still breastfeeding, or, uh, you know, and I have no family history. And so I'm sure that what I'm feeling there is nothing. If, if a woman has a sign, they should, no matter what the age, she, she should be coming in, right? Yeah, I, I mean, definitely, if you're having a breast complaint, come into the breast center, mm -hmm. get it evaluated. The American Society of Breast Surgeons recommends starting mammogram for an average age. Uh, person at 40 and mm -hmm. then continuing on that mammogram and if you think that you have a life expectancy of 10 years so we meet a lot of older women that think that they don't need a mammogram because they're say 75 or older but we see plenty of breast cancers in their 90s and when they're caught early uh, much easier to treat get back to your normal life get back to your golf game do all the things <laughs> you want to do mm -hmm. now one thing is that it isn't just radiation if you were diagnosed or it isn't just surgery when you're diagnosed so there's a, there's also a team approach to that so how does it work as a team when you guys sit down and say okay here's patient X and they have this and how does how does that team approach kind of involve with everybody kind of working together and figuring out what the best approach is and where the treatments are going to happen and when yeah I mean I think you know treating breast cancer is a multidisciplinary approach that's how we approach it and we rely on first and foremost our breast radiologists to help us find the cancer and mm -hmm. lead us to the cancer and surgery um, secondly we have medical oncologists we have radiation oncologists we have tumor boards that we do every week where we present a case and so we'll present the patient, the radiologist will present all of the images, the pathologist will present all of the slides. So we're all looking at this one patient's case, mm -hmm. getting input from medical oncology, radiation oncology. We talk to other surgeons. So it's a very uh, multidisciplinary approach where we get input from everyone so we're not just practicing in a vacuum. It's really important. Right. And I think I would imagine that for the patient, they, there's a certain sense of security in that. that I had, there's a whole, pe whole team of people taking a look at this and figuring out what the best approach is. And there can be some disagreements in the room mm -hmm. exactly exactly what the approach might be. But in the end, I think there's that maybe there's the, there's that feeling of, okay, we've got, we've got something right here. Or there, there's a confidence when you come back to your patient and say, here's how we're going to start. I talked to the team and this is what we're doing. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, I think that working as a team is so important. None of us will work in a vacuum, and there's so many different ways to approach things, and that's why it's helpful with these tumor boards that we do weekly to discuss and come up with all the different options. I think um, also important I wanted to mention is that not only coming for your mammogram is important, but who the person who's reading your mammogram is really important. Mm -hmm. And so at 
um, our breast center, we have a team of dedicated breast radiologists reading your mammogram. And what that means is throughout my entire career or any of the doctors that you'll see there, they are solely dedicated to the detection of breast cancer at its smallest. And you want that level of uh, expertise and experience when someone is reading mm -hmm. your exam. Mm -hmm. Now, there's a, I want to make sure we have an older community that watches this program. Is there a certain age where you don't need them anymore? Is that a myth? <laughs> no. Well, if, yeah. if you think you have a life expectancy of at least 10 years, you should be in getting your mammograms. Okay. So yeah. 85, you think you're going to live till 95? You know, pe people are living older these days. So, right. um, and of course, if you have a complaint, you come in regardless. So. Yes, yeah, exactly. absolutely. If there's, if, there's some, if there's a problem, it's time to go mm -hmm. in, no matter what it might yeah. be. All right. So I want to make sure we get the information on there. It's uh, memorialcare.org backslash women's health for people to get more information about the center and what's going on there. And maybe even be able to see uh, two of you at some point. That would be, I'm sure, yeah, wonderful, wonderful experience. As long as it's a, a negative diagnosis. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. Come for a tour. Yes. Come for a tour. Come for a tour. See tour. The place. Terrific. Thank you both for coming in. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for back. having us. Thank you. When we come back, we're going to preview the Monday movie. Stay with us. Joint care so exceptional, you'll wish you'd done it sooner. At Memorial Care, we're voted high in patient satisfaction for a reason. Our specialized surgeons and care teams understand the pain you're going through, as well as the best personalized treatment to get you back to what you love sooner. With nationally recognized care, advanced technology like our Precision Mako surgical system, and support that's always by your side. Get ready to go forth with renewed joy. A new movement awaits at Memorial Care Orthopedic and Spine Institute. Laguna Woods Dental Care, our goal is to serve and provide dental services to the residents of Laguna Woods. Dr. Mosin Mahmood is currently specializing in senior dental care from USC Dental School and has been serving the Laguna Woods community for over 16 years. At Laguna Woods Dental, our top priority is your overall wellness, ensuring your current medications do not affect your oral health. We offer a convenient plan for $250 a year that includes exam, x-rays, and all types of cleanings are covered. Our office is located right outside of gate number three. Come book your appointment today. Welcome to Harvard Eye Associates. We're focused on your eye care at all three of our Orange County locations. Our new location in Laguna Hills, Orange, and San Clemente. Each facility features the latest in advanced technology and diagnostic equipment. And a trusted collection of doctors that care about your vision and your quality of life. We deliver what matters to you and your family. Harvard Eye Associates, the future of vision today. Welcome back. We want to tell you about a Monday movie, and it's going to be a good one for the holiday. It's Hocus Pocus 2, starring Jennifer Parker and Bette Midler, and it's brought to us by Harvard Eye Associates. If you didn't see Hocus Pocus 1, I didn't see either of them, but I have a, I have a sneaking suspicion that 2 will be remarkably easy to follow, so don't worry about having not seen one. Uh, it is all about, a, it's a sequel to the 1993 movie, and where two young women accidentally bring back Sanderson sisters to modern day Salem, and they must figure out how to stop the hung, child hunger witches from wreaking havoc on the world. My goodness, it seems a little bit frightening. Well, I guess it's Halloween, isn't it? Let's take a look at our weather. We want to take a quick look, and it's going to be uh, some windy day for the rest of today, and then the winds are going to start dying down tomorrow as uh, the Santa Ana's, our biggest Santa Ana of the year, kind of dies down, and we kind of go to basically warm, sunny skies and high temperatures for the rest of the week. We'll get some cooling next week, but for this week, it's going to be mostly 80s. And for us, that's going to do it. We hope you get ready for Halloween tomorrow. That's going to be a good one. And on tomorrow's show, we got some, I don't know, so scary, Sunshine Performance Club and Shalom Club. It's not too scary, but maybe they'll dress up. I don't know. I won't be here. Bobby Higgins will be here, and she'll have a great show. That's going to do it for this show. I'm Michael Taylor. For all of us here at This Day, we hope you make this day a great one. <laughs> <laughs>